If you are looking to relocate to St. Augustine or Palm Coast, this video is going to do a compare and contrast of St. Augustine and Palm Coast so that you can make sure which one is the right decision for your future move. What's up everyone? My name is Thomas with Real Broker here in St. Augustine, Florida. And if you're looking to buy, sell, or invest here in Northeastern Florida, whether it's St. Augustine or Palm Coast, make sure you reach out to me and my team directly. All we try to do is give you the information so that you can make an educated decision on what you want to do, which is buy, sell, or invest here in Northeastern Florida. The purpose of today's video is to outline some of the things that you need to know about regarding St. Augustine and Palm Coast, and we're gonna put them head to head so you can make an educated decision on what area is going to be right for you. The main topics that we're gonna cover are gonna be housing prices, we're gonna talk about the city regulations, we're also gonna talk about like the dining and art scene in the area, beaches, all these things we're gonna cover in today's video, and I think it's gonna push you one way or the other. Now, the first thing I wanna talk about is going to be the housing prices, and this is probably the main criteria people look at when they are looking to relocate because it affects their bottom line and, and how much money they're going to have when they get here. And if you're looking at St. Johns County, that median sale price is gonna be around $500,000. Now, this is talking about all types of homes. And if you're looking at Palm Coast, the median sale price is gonna be around $355,000. So about $150,000 saving just being about 30 to 45 minutes south of downtown St. Augustine. I think one of the biggest things to mention along with this is that the majority of houses within the city of Palm Coast are going to be single family residential homes on 80 by 120 lots. Whereas St. Augustine and St. John's County has much more of a mix than I would say the city of Palm Coast does. Probably 90 to 95% of their housing inventory is going to be single family homes. And in St. John's County, we have a ton of single family homes. Don't get me wrong on that point, but we also have a ton of beachfront condos. We also have townhomes. Uh, we just have a lot more opportunity here in terms of different housing availability at different prices. For example, you can get a new construction townhome just down the road from me uh, with a three bedroom, two bath for right around $230,000, right? Now that's much, much cheaper than you can find in Palm Coast because really there's not too many townhomes that exist. But they do have a couple of new construction communities in Palm Coast that have just opened up recently. But aside from those, there's not really too many opportunities to own a cheaper property than that $355,000 mark. Now you may be seeing that housing cost difference and you're like, oh wow, well the bang for your buck is down in Palm Coast. So I'm gonna go there. Not so fast. Now here's one major caveat to that. In St. John's County, the average tax rate is probably around 1.4%. So your taxes are probably gonna be much lower than the city of Palm Coast where their average tax rate across there is like 1.83 to 1.9% which you know if you're looking at the cost on a hundred thousand dollar home that's the millage rate so what you do is you take the purchase price times that as a decimal right so you're going to be paying about 1.4 percent for your taxes versus 1.8 percent so it makes a huge difference on your annual cost to own the property nice so I did a little bit of math here so you wouldn't have to do it. And if you're buying a home in St. John's County around $400,000 and your millage rate is 1.4%, no HOA, no CDD, your taxes are gonna be around $5,600. Now, if you compare that to Palm Coast and you're buying a $400,000 home in Palm Coast, which is about 50,000 more than the median sale price there, your taxes are actually gonna be about $7,300 based on that 1.83% millage rate. So yes, when you're looking at it in terms of you know, dollar for dollar housing costs in St. John's County is more expensive, but over the life of you paying taxes and how long you plan on living there, those costs could add up. Now, obviously it's a $2,000 difference between the both and we're looking at a spread of about $150,000, so you would have to hold it for a lot longer. But for a lot of people that are on a fixed income, these are your carrying costs on an annual basis. So it might make more sense to go the opposite way in St. John's County than it would for Palm Coast. But that's for you to decide. I'm here just to give you the information. Now, another thing that I think you need to know about about both areas is that there's regulation in both. Now, in St. John's County, you have a lot more HOAs and CDDs, and those are gonna be the regulating bodies saying what you can do with the front of your house, what you can plant, what you can paint the color of your house, all that kind of stuff. In the city of Palm Coast, the city itself acts like a giant HOA. Maybe that's where that higher tax rate comes from because if your grass isn't mowed, the city will let you know. If you have a boat parked in your front yard for too long, the city will let you know. If you wanna park an RV behind your gate and you can see it from the street, the city's gonna let you know. There's a whole bunch of things within the city of Palm Coast that 
kind of make it not friendly for many people when you're looking for a no HOA community because the city acts like an HOA in a lot of ways. Just to add an anecdotal story there, I have a friend who works for an HVAC company here locally and he, he lives down in Palm Coast. He has a whole bunch of older neighbors who have lived in Palm Coast for a long time and he wasn't aware of this, this rule in this city ordinance. So he has a HVAC truck and it says, you know, the company on it, let's just say it's Ryan's HVAC. And one of his neighbors called the city on him and said like, hey, he's got this truck parked out in his driveway. Why are you running? Why are you running? You're not allowed to have any type of commercial uh, branding or anything on the side of your vehicles parked in a driveway in the city of Palm Coast. Kind of silly to me, especially because like, don't you need HVAC guys and plumbing guys and painters and all that kind of stuff to, you know, service your house. But I digress, uh, either way, a lot of people get around this by buying like a magnet and they'll just throw it over the side of their car, wherever the branding is. So it's just a white space on their car, opposed to having to deal with the city and their neighbors and any type of bullshit around that. Now let's dive into a little bit of the lifestyle that both of these areas have to afford. Now, St. John's County is obviously a very big tourist area downtown, you know, it's the nation's oldest city, whole bunch of old buildings, the Colonial Quarter, St. George Street, a whole bunch of great dining, restaurants, art, music, all of that is in downtown St. Augustine. You also have that scattered through Volano Beach and St. Augustine Beach. So it makes it really attractive if you're living within the area to go to these places because it, it's in your backyard. You can go and hang out and have a good time. Now, the city of Palm Coast is going to be a lot more residential. So if the Metropolitan of Jacksonville is a five speed and it's you're in fifth year, St. Augustine is probably third or fourth gear around there. I would say Palm Coast is probably gonna be second gear. It's pretty slow going down there. And you really only have residential and commercial space. There's not really an area, like a city area, city center where people go and hang out. Aside from one area called European Village, which is very cute and very cool. If you've ever been there, ever heard of it, it is a little setup, has about I don't know, five restaurants in it, a lot of commercial spaces, a little wine store, stuff like that. And it looks like a little European village. There's rentals above it. Oh my God. And it's, it sits pretty much on the intercoastal before you head over to like the Flagler Beach area and Palm Coast area that is on the water there. But aside from that, there's really not much. You have Palm Coast Parkway with like a lot of commercial space and restaurants. You know, this is where you're gonna find like your Target and your Lowe's and your Publix. And they also have Route 100 where it's like the same thing. They're building the BJ's on there. Uh, they have a Target on there as well. Uh, but it's, it's gonna be very much like you drive, you pull up. There's no walkability really to Palm Coast. So those are going to be the biggest difference in terms of like what there is to do. The good thing is, is if you live in Palm Coast, you're saving a lot on your housing costs and you're only about 30 to 45 minutes from St. Augustine. You're only about 30 to I mean, probably 45 minutes to Daytona. So you're kind of in the middle of everything. And then you also have access to Flagler Beach, which is like a really super cute small beach. Now, another thing that I think are pretty similar between St. John's County and Palm Coast is your access to the outdoors. Uh, you know, whether you want to do some kayaking or fishing or you want to go out to the, the beach, all of these have, you know, pretty good options for you in regards to that. Now, the one difference I would say is like if you're looking to live on the intercoastal, I think Palm Coast in terms of the sea section, uh, and that's, it, it's, it sounds funny, but... <laughs> that has nothing to do with pregnancy. Uh, every every town or every little area in Palm Coast is named based on the first letter of the street. So the C section, all the, all the streets there are labeled with the C. In the B section, everything's labeled with the B. In the L section, everything's labeled with an L. So for example, if you live in the L section, your street name might be Laramie or Longfellow or anything that starts with an L. If you're in the C section, then it's the opposite. But the C section also happens to be the canal section of Palm Coast. For the most part, every home that is in the C section of Palm Coast has intercoastal access and can also go out to the Atlantic Ocean. It's a good bit of a drive, don't get me wrong, I think it's like, you know, 11 nautical miles or something like that, probably about a 30 minute boat ride or so, but you can still do it from the C section in Palm Coast. Now, there is another area in St. Augustine called Treasure Beach. That's, you know, where my grandma lives. She has a double wide trailer that sits on the intercoastal, direct intercoastal front. Uh, but I would say that neighborhood in terms of like how well put together it is, the C-section in Palm Coast is going to win out because everything in the C-section has an 80 by 120 lot with a single family home on it. Whereas where my grandma lives in Treasure Beach, there's a good mix of double wide trailers. There's a good mix of, you know, small single family homes and the, the title 
water in that area seems to affect the, the, the canals a lot more there than you do see in Palm Coast. It seems to be a lot deeper in Palm Coast. So if you have a bigger boat, if you're looking for, you know, to be more on the water, that might be the better area for you. That being said, I do think Treasure Beach is changing very rapidly. You're seeing people rip these double wide trailers out and building million dollar homes. And uh, like, I think my grandma's property is probably valued somewhere around like $800,000 just to buy the land as it is and ripping that trailer off. Um, it's pretty, pretty astounding because I think my great grandparents bought two lots back in the seventies for like seven grand each or seven grand altogether, I believe. So prices have changed pretty drastically since then. And since we're talking about the outdoors, I can't not mention the beaches here in the area. So St. John's County honestly has, in terms of Northeastern Florida, has the best beaches. They're the most wide, you can drive on them. Um, it, it, they just are much better than, than what you have in Palm Coast. The, the beaches in Palm Coast, it has a little bit of a mix and there's there's good and bad to that, right? They're much, they're not as wide, right? So from the dunes to the water, you just don't have enough space. Uh, you can't drive on the beach there. And also in many portions of the beach in Palm Coast and in Flagler County, there is also, uh, they call it rock beach. So it's pretty cool if you're into you know, nature and wildlife because it, it's natural tide pools that form over these rocks. But if you wanna access the surf and the water, you're gonna have to climb over a little bit of rocks. Now, I'm not saying they're like huge monolithic structures. Wait for it. They're, they're typically only a foot or two off of the ground. You can easily walk over them, but not exactly as safe as it is in St. Augustine Beach where you don't have that obstacle. And the last thing that I wanna talk about is going to be the employment in the area. And the, the reason I saved this for last is because they both pretty much have the same setup going. The main employer in St. Johns County is going to be the hospitality industry and government. And the main employer in Palm Coast is going to be the hospitality industry and government. There's not too much industry outside of that in the area, which is a big negative for both areas. You know, I wish they would spur a little bit more of economic activity, especially with the, uh, the rising costs in both St. Johns County and in Flagler County. It's changed drastically for both of them. So with that being said, that's pretty much a negative of both of the areas, but they're very similar to each other because they have a lot of tourists that go in there. Now, St. Johns County has a lot more than, than Flagler County, I'm sure, and you're not gonna really have to worry about that in the city of Palm Coast versus the city of St. Augustine, but it is something to consider because if you are moving here and you need to get a job, it's gonna to be tough because you're either gonna to have to go up to Jacksonville or you're gonna to have to go down to Daytona, maybe even Orlando to get a higher paying job, right? So in, in that scenario, maybe St. Johns County makes more sense. Yeah, it's more expensive. You pay a little bit less in taxes, but you're also closer to Jacksonville where you're gonna find better paying jobs than you would throughout the rest of Northeastern Florida. So guys, that is it. I hope you gained a little bit of knowledge, a little bit of insight in the differences between St. Augustine and Palm Coast. I put them head to head so you could really see what the main main talking points when we're looking at these two different areas. I uh, hope you gained a little bit of value out of this. If you did, do me that solid and tap that subscribe button below. Like the video. If you have any questions, if you're looking to buy, sell, or invest within the Northeastern Florida area, make sure you reach out to me and my team. All we try to do is give you the information so that you can make an educated decision on what you want to do, which is buy, sell, or invest in St. Augustine, Palm Coast, Flagler County, Putnam County, Duval County. We got you covered. We got your back. All we try to do is be advisors to you. We're not pushy salespeople. That's why I created this thing, so people could reach out to me. And if you don't want me to reach out to you, it's all good. Until next time, guys.